Hey, my name is Christian. I'm Dravain Vine and Rosso Trattoria. I was really in the mood for pork chops today and it dawned on me that I've got a friend who said that I could come out to his pig farm whenever I liked and see how he raised those majestic animals that give us bacon and pork chops and barbecue and all that good stuff. So I'm going to a pig farm. So I don't really know what to expect when I get out here today. Hey, pastor pork, to me it just means, you know, maybe he lets them out of the pen once in a while and lets them run around and then puts them right back in. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case. The one thing I think I am expecting is a lot of stink. I mean, in the research that I did about hog farms, one company alone that accounts for about 20% of the pork that's raised in this country slaughtered 27 million hogs in a single year and produced 26 million pounds of pig shit and other waste. So, I just have a feeling it's gonna stink. But, I don't know, pasture pork, it sounds so beautiful. We'll see. So we've come out to Caw Caw Creek Farms, which is just outside Columbia, South Carolina, and is owned by my good friend Emil DeFelice. Now Emil's been in the farming business for about as long as I've been in the restaurant business, which has been about 15 years. But it's only been in the past half dozen years that he's been raising heritage hogs. And now sells them to everybody from Daniel Balud to Thomas Keller. All I know is that everything that I've ever made from any hog that's come off this farm has been the best pork dish I've ever had. Where the big, where the big metal buildings with the fans on the side and the stink and the we don't need them. This is this is just a way of working with nature, working with the nature of the pig uh, to produce a better piece of meat, a safer piece of meat, and a more pleasant experience for for me and uh, and the animals both. So I'm not going to smell pig shit everywhere. You're not not not, not if I have <laughs> done it right today. All right, sweet. This I, I got to say, I mean, this is nothing. This is not anything of what I expected. Uh, if you if you work with the nature of the pig, then you have a program that's sustainable and, thank goodness, delicious. Yeah, that's been proven. All right, well, show me around. Christian, this is so beautiful. This the whole point of the program is that the pigs can uh, manage their own life, manage their own diet, and and they're really their own daily schedule. So we have some up here on high ground and full sun that are eating. Um, we have some of them out here that are grazing, uh -huh. grazing green grass, and we have some of them that are coming in and out of the woods, finding their own forage in there, the, either the acorns, the hickory nuts, the earthworm, the termites, right. the grubs, and all that kind of stuff. So if you let a pig manage his, his own day, then you get a tastier piece of meat. It's that simple. Makes sense. Look yeah. at them. Oh my God. You like the Pied Piper of pigs. Look at, they're all coming. <laughs> well, they're curious animals. So if we did this every day, they wouldn't be this curious. Okay. All right? So they like variety. And right. in many ways, they are like human beings. In other words, they want the same amount of protein, roughage, and uh, starches that we do. Mm -hmm. um, their sense of interest and playfulness is also similar to ours. So, so in comparison to what they're eating and foraging for here, I mean, like, what's the difference between, say, what a giant industrial hog farm would be? Well, them right now. you've heard the expression "the other white meat." Well, yeah. if you think of, if you think yeah. of if you think of veal, veal is a pale meat, right? Right. Why? Because the animal doesn't move. Yeah. So we, we like, I like to take these pigs to about 325, 350 pounds, and that gives them a nice, um, you know, in the business what it's called intramuscular fat. In right. the restaurant, it's called marbling. It's called marbling. Yeah. So you've got like what a few hundred hogs here. Yes. All right. So what? How do you go about like vaccinating them and? giving them their meds and all the other stuff that, you know, livestock supposedly needs. Well, here's the thing. A lean pig is a sick pig. Okay. So when you have um, a life that is geared towards happiness, health, um, and as little stress as possible, you have um, uh, no need to put vaccinations and, uh, of course, hormones or anything like So you don't have like to vaccinate stance. them at all? That's correct. There's nothing that happens here. So, of course, from time to time, they, one might get injured. Right. Um, but as far as a uh, program of uh, shots and pills, yeah, no, not necessary. That's right. Nice. Very cool. All right, Emma's gonna go ahead and feed them, make them fatter, more delicious. We're gonna head back to the restaurant, cook one up. All right, we're in the backyard. We've just come back from the farm, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make simple grilled pork chops 
with a nice apple chutney. I mean, it's fall, it's a perfect dish for now. We've got our pork chops from Caw Caw Creek, pastured pork, beautiful. But let's get started on the chutney. This is really simple. You got some nice tart Granny Smith apples, peeled, diced. Red onion, diced. Dried cranberries. Light brown sugar. White balsamic vinegar. Mustard seeds. Fresh ginger, minced. On to heat. All right, we've got our chutney on the grill. Now's a good time for you to get some other things together like your other side items. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk a little bit about the different types of pork. And well, we've got pastured pork and we've got the kind that you buy at the store. And there's a huge difference as you can tell. Aside from how thick he cuts his chops in comparison to the ones you get at the store, look at the fat marbling. That translates into flavor. Not much fat, not much flavor. Lots of fat, lots of flavor. Why would you eat this when you could eat this. All right, so let's get them on the grill. All right, we've got a hot, oiled grill. I like to season them with a little bit more salt and pepper. Even though they've been brined, still like to have that little bit of crust on there. I like to spray them with a little bit of olive oil just to make sure they're not gonna stick. Now I've got this grill set, so one side is really hot and the other side is down on low. Because these chops are so thick, we're going to want to grill them, get a nice grill mark on them, and then we're going to want to move them over to the other side and let them roast the rest of the way. We want to go ahead and put it at a 45 degree angle. Go ahead and season the other side now. All right, and now we just let them cook. The biggest mistake that most backyard barbecue chefs make is they move the meat around way too much. All right, we're going to rotate them 90 degrees, keeping them on the same side and we're gonna let them cook for another two minutes. That gets you those really cool restaurant style marks in them. Flip them over once and do the same thing. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and flip them over. This is the one time that you flip them over. That's all. All right, since these are so thick and a lot of people like their pork done medium, that's where we're gonna move them over to the cooler side of the grill and we're gonna shut the lid and we're gonna let them roast the rest of the way. They should be done in about four minutes. Our chutney is done. Most of the apples are cooked through. All the onions are nice and soft. It doesn't really matter if all the apples are cooked through. Some could be crisp, but it's kinda of nice that way. These have been on for about four minutes now, roasting on the cooler side of the grill. Perfect. Mm. All right. So here we go. Pastured pork, grilled pastured pork chops with a really nice fall apple dried cranberry chutney. Fantastic, because life's too short to eat crappy food. <laughs>